going on guys? Ben from JK Gear and Gadgets. And in this video, we're going to do a bend test against my Rough Stuff tie rod versus the Barnes four wheel drive tie rod. So the difference is one's steel and the other one's solid aluminum. So let's talk about the Rough Stuff. Um, the Rough Stuff tie rod is one and a half inches outside diameter with a quarter inch wall thickness all the way around. So that's a pretty beefy steel tie rod, but we'll see how it does, you know, supporting the weight of the vehicle and how easily it bends. Now, the Barnes four wheel drive tie rod is aluminum. It's solid aluminum with an outside diameter also of one and a half. So they're the exact same size, but different materials. So let's put them to the test and see which one comes out on top. All right, so first up is our steel rough stuff tie rod, heavy duty. I went ahead and disconnected my hydraulic ram just because I don't want to put any added stress on that for this test. So let's go ahead and jack it up. As you can tell, tires off the ground and so is that one. So the Jeep is simulated like it's fully sitting on a rock right now. The whole front end is sitting on the tie rod. So let's loosen this up, drop it down and see what happens. So we'll go down slowly. So as you can tell, it's not drastically bent, but it still does retain that upward curve. In case you couldn't see the bend, you can see the bend a lot clearer from a forward angle. So that's definitely enough to throw off your uh, steering and your steering wheel and make the Jeep just drive like crap on the way home. So I went ahead and took the end links off of the rough stuff one just to show you guys how bent it is. Um, I'm gonna set my camera down and then roll it. So I mean you can see the gap. Let's focus in on it. And let's roll it. As you can tell, this is wobbling all over the place. Extremely bent. So if you bent a steel tie rod like this, you'd have to either winch it back out or bend it, you know, some other way. And once you bend it on a trail, it's really not much fun to stop and worry about your tie rod before the way home. So now that I got the new Barnes aluminum steering in, this is solid one and a half inch aluminum. We're gonna do the same test here. All right, so next up is the Barnes four-wheel drive solid aluminum tie rod. So, same thing. We're going to jack it up and see what happens. <laughs> so I actually just maxed out the length of my jack um, so that's as high as high up as I can go because it's aluminum it's gonna flex more uh, you know opposed to the, the uh, steel one where it actually lifted the tires off the ground so this is flexed at a much higher angle but what we're gonna do now is let down the jack and watch it spring back pretty much to a flat position what I'm assuming is gonna happen So as you can tell, it's completely straight back to where it was. Unbelievable. We did that with the steel, and as you can tell, it bent like crazy. So the aluminum definitely was able to bend and go straight back to exactly where it was. So now that we know that aluminum is able to bend and it will retain its original shape is awesome. But a lot of people aren't sold on just that. They're like, oh, well I'd rather just get a crazy thick steel tie rod that's never gonna bend. Well, in order to do that, it's going to have to be extremely beefy. I'm talking huge. Um, that's going to come you know, at a higher price tag. It's going to weigh more. And honestly, it's just overkill. Um, with a one and a half inch aluminum tie rod, it's able to take the hits and it's going to bend right back. In the past, one of the big like cons of aluminum steering was the price. 
um, you know, in order to get an aluminum tie rod, you're looking at spending four or five hundred dollars. So that's when people would go with, you know, a cheaper steel tie rod upgrade. But now that Barnes has their tie rod, like I said in my previous video, for one ninety nine, that's unbelievable. Um, I paid, I think, one eighty five for my steel rough stuff one. Uh, so fifteen more dollars gets you an amazing upgrade. Um, aluminum can be just as strong as steel and in an application such as a tie rod where the length is extremely long you're going to need something that can take a hit and not stay bent so i mean aluminum right off the bat is just a perfect upgrade for steering um i'll probably eventually do my drag length once they come out with the flip kit because i'm running the flip kit on mine but uh you know as per the drag length it doesn't take as many hits as your tie rod would so i'm you know i'm not in too big of a rush but down the road, I'll probably switch to aluminum. Now, another thing about aluminum is that you are gonna save a little bit of weight. Um, you know, it's not much. The tie rod doesn't weigh too much, but you know, you might save 10 or 15 pounds. But, you know, if you think about it, by the time you're adding, you know, bumpers, you know, steel everywhere around, it's nice to save a few pounds where you can. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I just wanted to show you guys the bin test. Um, like always, throw some stuff in the comments. I'd love to hear it from you. And if you are looking for an upgraded steering, I'd highly suggest the Barnes aluminum kit. Um, what else can I talk about? The stock, if you're still running the stock steering, don't even try this, because you'll put like two pounds of pressure on it and it's gonna fold in half. The stock, the JK steering, as well as XJs, TJs, YJs, everything. They're so thin, it's insane. You, you just tap a rock and it's thin. So, thanks for watching guys. Like always, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and check out my other videos. Thanks guys.